Hello friends, it's a pretty exciting day for me. My channel has surpassed the 1 million views mark. Now that's lifetime and it's all the views for all my videos and I know that's pretty small fry in the world of YouTube. Plenty of people that have well over a million views for one single video, which it's a number I know I'll never hit because I'm kind of feeling a uh, niche here on YouTube uh, with a lot of these Jethro Tull tutorials. Before we get started on the tutorial, I would just like to say a few words about my recent trip to New Zealand. This is my fourth time to New Zealand, so you can tell that it's a, a perennial favorite of mine. Uh, this time went down for two weeks with my family. It's a long flight from Dallas, Texas to Auckland, New Zealand. That was uh, a bit brutal. Once uh, on the South Island, though, we tend to focus on the South Island just because it's so spectacular. We uh, visited Stewart Island off the southern coast, which is a favorite of mine. I love doing in photography of birds and uh, there's a bird preserve on Stewart Island. There are just so many birds there, that unique. Uh, so it's just a really fun time doing photographs of those. We also uh, hiked in the rainforest. Uh, the west coast of New Zealand is, an, is a rainforest. It's amazing. Saw some freshwater eels. New Zealand is home to the largest freshwater eel. These are about five to six feet long. Uh, most of them weigh about 25 pounds, and they're amazingly 80 to 100 years old. Stunning. It's also, uh, this area is home to one of the largest trees in New Zealand, and this one is about 150 uh, feet high, about 50 meters roughly, and it's uh, anywhere between probably 500 and 1,000 years old. And this particular individual tree was the tree that they used to model the tree in the first Avatar movie, uh, The Tree of Life. We also did a cruise on Milford Sound, which is a big fjord on the west coast, which you, you have to do if you go to New Zealand. Spectacular. Uh, we also passed by the Kawaru uh, bungee jump, which was the first bungee jump in the world back in the 80s. So this is where bungee jumping started. And my son, being the daring sort, uh, went ahead and jumped off the bridge. His dad is way too chicken for that. So New Zealand, wonderful place. It's amazing to walk through the forest and listen to that bird song. All right, so today I'm gonna to be going over One Brown Mouse. It's such a fun tune done in dadgad tuning and just a, a really fun tune to play. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to separate out, to tease out the different guitar parts because there's so much going on. You've got the keyboards, you got multiple guitars, you got Martin bars, electric. Ian's playing at least two acoustic guitars. There may be a mandolin in there. It may be an octave mandolin, I can't quite tell. So there are all these harmony parts going here and there. All right, so here we go. Uh, sorry to bore you with my trip to New Zealand, but I love it so much down there. So let's uh, get started. Here we go. Today I'm playing my Orangewood Mason guitar. It's very affordable, plays easy enough. I have did a previous kind of review on this guitar when I put it on the Pleck machine over in Lawrence, Kansas at Mass Street Music. I'll put a plug in for those guys because it's uh, my favorite music store. A uh, nice guitar for the money, certainly, and uh, really lacks much bass uh, response, which is okay if you're recording a guitar into a band mix. All right, so I'll let you tune to my guitar, Dad Gad tuning with a capo on the second fret. Tune up to my guitar here. When I'm trying to tease out the different guitar parts in these songs, the Jethro Tull songs, uh, I tend to, uh, the things I do, I slow the song down in the YouTube player by clicking the little gear icon and changing the speed. So slowing down helps. I also move the balance back and forth and listen with headphones. So I move it all the way to the right, see what I can hear on the right, move it all the way to the left, see what I can hear on the left. And usually you can find uh, the main guitar part in there somewhere. It's not all that easy because Ian's always has these harmony parts moving all over the place. 
that's how I try to tease out these things. I also will try to find uh, videos of him playing these songs live, and that way I can see where his hand position is. Sometimes I actually see the chords, and that, that can be very helpful in, in figuring these things out too. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the opening lick. What you're going to do is you're going to play on the G string here on the ninth fret. We're going to strum down to that note. And then we're going to pick that note three, three times in all, counting the strum. just going down the G string before going to the next chord. Alright, so the next chord is kind of the home chord of this song in the home key. We've got the D string fretted here, G string fretted here, and the E string fretted up here. So you get this, so you get this Celtic sounding power chord. It doesn't have a third in it. So that's our melody. And then continuing. So that's the melody we're going to be playing as we're strumming. Once again, all right. Now you'll notice in the strumming, uh, Ian does this strum all over in this song. So put it wherever you want. kind of his uh, raked up stroke or slurred up stroke, whatever you want to call it. So here he ends the phrase like that. Does it one more time before changing to the next chord. All right, so now we're just playing one finger here on the G string, open, D string here, back the G string open, and back to there. And we can strum the, all the strings. And then we come back up and repeat that opening motif. So this is where I was a little confused in my first tutorial on this song because the, the harmony is kind of uh, dominated by the portative pipe organ, as Ian calls it, with uh, D. Palmer playing, uh, playing that. And the, the melody of the organ goes... The organ, the organ just sits on this note here before going to, to the next chord. All right, but what I hear Ian's guitar doing is this. Coming down those notes. 
So taking it from the start. So here is where we start the verse and the singing. So we take, open up the E string. We put our pinky on the B string here. So we're just playing the melody that we're singing. Smile, little smile. And then we come down and play this on the D string. So that's going to be our melody. get to this chord we're just playing the A string here and the B string here and the other strings are open don't we don't we don't really play the bottom E strings so we're we're muting that or just missing that with our strum so we're not playing the low E string and then back to this chord and coming down those notes again I'm not sure if he actually does that, but I like to open up the E string before starting the next uh, verse. Perform breath on your tiny hands. You wish you were a man. Every day can turn another page. All right, <clears throat> now a tip I can give you when you're playing this you're picking all these individual notes kind of as you're strumming. So it's very important to keep your momentum going with your right strumming hand. Watch what my right hand is doing while I'm picking all these notes and strumming it kind of at the same time. So you can see that my hand keeps it keeps moving up and down. So I'm really trying to focus on keeping the momentum going so that I don't stop to pick any of these notes because if you stop you're going to interrupt your strumming pattern. So it's very important just to keep that right hand moving up and down. So I'm really focusing on keeping that right hand going smoothly. Alright, so all the verses are the same, so it's just that same thing, motif repeated over and over. When we get to the bridge, do you want I really care for you. We're going to go to this shape, so we're just barring a cross on the second fret above the capo, and we just have the G string fretted here. It results in this power chord without a third. Then we go back down here with just one finger, and then back to our home chord. 
Now he just keeps strumming that home chord in there. Do you wonder if I really care for you? Personally, I like to sort of put a little of that motif in there. Well, let me kind of show you. Because that's what the other uh, instruments are doing. Uh, they're kind of throwing that in there. So you can put that in there or not, depending on your personal preference. Am I just the company you keep? Which one of us? All right, so now we're coming up. We're just moving this up one fret. Which one of us? All right, so now this one is a little strange because we're fretting the low E string here with our uh, middle finger. With our ring finger, we have the D string here. And with our little finger, we have the G string here. And you can strum all of the, uh, all of the strings. It results in this suspended fourth uh, chord. So we're back to the home chord again. Which one of us exercises on the old treadmill? Who hides his head? So we're back to here. Now, he actually, when I watch him play this, he just comes back to this chord shape here. Um, most people that I see cover this, and myself included, uh, come up and play this chord shape here. So it's, it's just this. You're just moving this shape around. Uh, Which one of us exercises on the old treadmill? Who hides his head pretending to sleep? So you can either play that there or play that here. You're kind of accomplishing the same thing. And then we come back to this shape. And we just go back and forth between an open G string and fret it there. So when I watch him play it live, he plays that next motif here. Personally, I think it sounds better an octave higher, which I think is Martin Barr's part. He's just doing it an octave higher. So I play it up there, but Ian plays it down there. Same notes, just an octave apart. So take your, uh, take your choice of those. And then it's back to... Like we did in the very opening intro. So he repeats that motif twice and, you, and I'll slow it down. It's a little bit hard to hear that part, but that, that's, I've watched him play it live, and that's what he does. But the, uh, the harmony, I think, to me, that, that little passage is dominated by the harmony that Martin Barr is playing, which is... So I'm going to play it the second way. So that, personally, that's what I like to do. But 
but once again, when I played this, when I uh, played along with the track, I stuck with what Ian does, because he's playing the low part of the harmony. All right, and then it goes to that little instrumental uh, section, interlude, and what we're doing there, it's moved up a, a whole step in key. And we're just playing the same chord. We're just using our index finger as a bar, as a uh, capo or capo, depending on where you live, I suppose. Capo, capo. Um, and we're just going to play the same chord shapes. So it's just the same chord shapes that we've been playing, but it's a whole step higher. And then we're back into the verses again. Alright, so that's all the same. So that gets us to the very ending of the song. One So we're playing all that on the E string. And then that just leaves that last uh, ending lick. Get the E string open, come up on the E string here, and then we're just going down the scale. We play the G string open when we get down there. string up and play the harmonic up here on the 14th fret above the 14th fret all right so that's uh, one brown mouse by Jethro Tull great song so until next time talk to you later bye bye